When you have nothing to defend, all you can do is attack. Welcome to Delta. In Gears of War, you never fight alone. This was one of the driving design mantras that we had from the start. It's not just about Marcus Phoenix, it's also about Dominic Santiago, it's also about the other members of Delta Squad. So in Gears 2, you actually get to know the other guys a little bit better, experience a little bit more of a personal story arc, and experience the horrors of war with the, the men of Delta Squad. So Gears 2 starts six months after the first Gears ends. You set off the light mass bomb underground and you think you've won. You've beaten back the Locust, but you start getting little bits of insurgent activity. Winter is coming on fast. It's starting to get a little bit chilly and humanity is in uh, serious trouble because the locusts are back and suddenly cities start sinking all over the place and you figure they're coming back with a vengeance. Humanity is up at this location called Jacinto. It's their one last safe city. They're all coming for it and this is your chance and so we just do a full assault. We basically need to strike back against the locusts and find where they live and take them out potentially once and for all. <laughs> They're the true underdog and that they're not just fighting a war for land or for power or for uh, money. It, it, they're fighting for survival. This is a, a fight against extinction. But when it really comes down to it, what the story we're telling is about Delta Squad. When we created the characters in Delta Squad, we kind of wanted to fill each different archetype for personality. Marcus is the kind of Caucasian anti-hero. He's had a few years, a few battles on him. It never ends. Uh, Dominic is the uh, half-Hispanic best friend who occasionally, you know, cracks a joke. If Cole used to puke on a raven, he must be tagging the walls with chute right now. Uh, Baird is the cynical, angry white man mechanic type who really, you know, believes he should be in charge, but his attitude is ultimately limiting him from getting that job. As Dom and I will continue on foot. What? But they... They're gonna die otherwise. And then Cole is the charismatic African-American athlete who is a tremendously wonderful soldier, you know, always uh, eager to lend a hand and, uh, you know, has become a fan favorite. Come on, man, let's go. Marcus Phoenix is an enigma wrapped in a riddle. I'm not sure if the game made Marcus cool or Marcus made the game cool, but he's just a guy who's stuck in the situation and he wants out of it. And the best way to get him to be able to go back to his regular life, if there even is a regular life anymore, is to beat the Locust back. Hang in there, Rook. We'll be there soon. Let's go find Carmine. Marcus is a good leader because he just knows what he's doing. He gets to the point. He gets, it's one of those people who just, he's a decision maker. He doesn't waffle. He's a guy who chose uh, his family over his duty back in the day when he went out to help his uh, father, Adam Phoenix. Dom looks up to Marcus, right? Uh, Baird's not a leader. He gets busted. He constantly gets promoted and then gets busted down to private every single time for doing something stupid. And then, you know, Gus loves him to death, but he's not exactly the guy you want deciding where to go because it's always going to be into the middle of him, into the middle of him. One of the new uh, Gears you get to meet in Gears 2 is Ty Caliso, who's a, a longtime friend of Marcus's. Yeah, they actually fought together in the Pendulum Wars. Ty, good to see you. We wanted to bring in a new good, tough soldier, but we didn't want another over-the-top Gus or another taciturn Marcus. And, you know, where do you go? Spiritual is what we thought. You know, someone who's fighting, it's something they believe in, and they believe sort of in, I won't say Bushido, but that art of the warrior and spirituality. Fate has thrown us together again, huh, Marcus? And it's just a kind of a different feel. We've really steered clear of religion in Gears. There's lots of statuary, things that sort of imply a religion, but we've kind of avoided that. Uh, and so this is the first time we've maybe peeked a little bit in about what their beliefs are. Everything happens for a reason. Wait a minute. This doesn't mean we got to fight in your army now, does it? I didn't say that, but you're not staying here. The Stranded to us are people who have chosen um, to stay and, and not to get caught up in in sort of the, the cog way. However, after years of that uh, lifestyle, it would probably get pretty exhausting and there's a certain percentage of uh, Stranded that are okay signing up for the cog. Dizzy's one of those characters that made that trade off and he's driving a giant truck for you in Gears 2. Oh, hold them off, boys! Get your asses down there! When you're making a game or a universe like Gears and you have your primary character of Marcus, you have to be very careful with how much personality you put on him because the player is projecting himself onto that guy. If Marcus was looking for his wife, the player would be like, wait, why do I care about this woman? With Dom, we're able to play with these emotions a little bit more. When we wrote Dom, Dom is the voice of the player. Uh, we didn't want, any time the player would be saying, what the hell is that, or what, why am I doing this, whatever, Dom says that. He's able to call out, you know, the pink elephant in the middle of the room. We wanted him to be more than just uh, sort of the best friend sidekick. We want to understand 
you know, what it is that motivates him and why is he in this war. I think we're taking a lot of risks with Dom. Uh, it's not just about killing Locust anymore. You ever seen this woman? Name's Maria. Pretty. We have to be really careful trying to get a love story into uh, a game like Gears.